Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now listen, as we call forth our daily bread today, release your faith. Say, how do I release my faith? Believe that God can give you your daily bread. I don't know what your daily bread is. It might be healing in your body. It might be finances. It might be a long promotion you've been waiting for. It might be the bill you need to clear out today. It might be your house rent. Whatever is a need in your life today is an indication that you require daily bread to meet that need. As long as that need is showing up today, then there is a supply of heaven for that need today. Did you get that? Now with this understanding, can you make that demand before the Lord? Listen, this thing is real. And that's what I've been telling you about. It's real. So can you put your mind on those things? Look at them for a moment. What do you have to pay today? Is a creditor coming to meet you today that you're owing them? Have they, have they threatened to come and meet you today? Relax. Relax. Whatever the need is right now, now take your mind, you've recognized the need is there. That need that is for today, you've recognized it, right? Now take your mind off it and take your mind to the Lord. Who David said, he daily loads us with benefits. Now you see, that's his character. It has nothing to do with you. The God that we talk about, this is his operation. You see, you may have a factory and you say, oh, did you know that factory? They produce 20,000 bottles of drinks in a day. Now, so what, what, what is the information you're getting? You're getting the capacity of that factory, the daily capacity of that factory. So now what does that do for you? What that do, does to you is this. If you are going to have a party, and you are inviting 20,000 people. And, and you are thinking, okay, what drink do I give them? Now that's when that information comes in handy. So, oh, even a day's production from that factory can supply us. See that now? So confidently you can go ahead and plan, knowing that there is a bottling company or a drink company that produces that capacity in a day. Now, so when David said to us that, he daily loads us with benefits. It's to give you an information in your mind. Now, today, you need to work with that information. Because see, that need that is showing up today, the benefit that God releases on a daily basis will meet that need. That need is not going to cross into tomorrow. Say amen. I'll repeat it again. That need you just recognized is not crossing over till tomorrow. Say amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So are you ready now? You see, by your words, you shall be justified. That's what Jesus said. So now let's make that confession, not just confession, that demand with faith in your heart that God is not only able, He is willing to meet that need. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. And I declare, you can call that need, you can call it now. I declare that so, so, and so need is met today. The need of the healing in my body is met today. The need in that death situation is met today. The need of that bill, that rent, that, that mortgage loan is met today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. 
watch what's going to happen today and i would like to hear from you praise god oh thank you lord jesus i was showing you something yesterday from hebrews chapter 4 it says therefore since a promise remains of entering his rest there is a promise remaining i don't know how you would want to feel that one day maybe you had a rich uncle you know, that I was so welding. And and you you've been away for so long. And you heard, oh, Uncle died. Oh, oh, he was a good man. Yeah, he was a good man. Anyway, it is well. And then they buried him. And then this was some years later. And then you come back home. And then you decide to visit the family. And say, Oh, how's everything? Say, fine. And then they say, Hey, do you know what? Your uncle remains something for you in his will. Really? What? He left an estate for you. Ah, uh, why didn't everybody? Yeah. Everybody have taken theirs, but yours is remaining. And it's been waiting for you. Now, what are you going to do? Ignore that? No. For me? Yes, for me. Where is it? Here are the documents. See that now? Now he's telling you that there is a promise for you. I mean you, you, you watching me right now. There is a promise for you concerning entering into God's rest. And no one has entered it yet. I mean, and the one that's for you, no one has entered it yet. See that now? Hey. So what am I supposed to do? He tells us what to do. He tells us what to do here. He says, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Now watch this. Verse 2 says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. The same gospel? Yeah. What gospel? Hey, there is the blessing of entering his rest. I'm talking to you about the one whom God will bless. See that now? There is a promise of someone entering into God's rest. And that promise is looking for the one to inherit it. And you are here. And the same way the gospel was preached to them, the gospel is now being preached to you. That's what I'm sharing, these things I'm sharing with you. And guess what? He says, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. There is an estate for you. Ah, <laughs> people think you can lie to me. Estate, and you could have not gone to carry it. <laughs> I beg, please. You know, there are people like that. See, why? They have the gospel message that uncle left an estate for him. But because he looked at the people saying it and he didn't receive that word and mix it with faith. How should he have mixed it with faith? Yeah, I was uncle's um, founder's uh, nephew or niece. My uncle loved me very much. Wow. Yeah, he could have left an estate for me. You know what? It will be a good thing to his memory that I inherit that estate. You know what? I'm going to inherit that. Where is the estate? I want to inherit it. Now, not just the thought of, wow, you mean so I'm rich. No, but the thought of, uncle thought this thing good for me. And so no, because he thought this thing for me, I'm going to enjoy it. So wherever he is, he's going to have pleasure that what he did was right. Brothers and sisters, do you know that is how we bring pleasure to God? You see that? We bring him great pleasure when we walk with understanding into the rest that he has provided for us. So God looks at it when we come before him and say, Father, you know what? I've got daily bread to receive from you today. 
<laughs> Praise God. Woo! So, so which way are you going to walk today? See that? Lord, I know what money is coming to me today. I'm not struggling to receive money. I'm not struggling to get money. I'm not going to get money because I labor so hard. No, I receive money because you, you have sent money to me today. Oh, Lord, I receive favor. You know what, Lord? I know, I know you've prepared favor for me today. And it will give you great joy if I walk in that favor. So I've made up my mind today. I'm walking in that favor that you have provided for me. Everywhere I go, people like me. I'm like you. You don't go sit down and say, Father, I don't know the evil spirit that is struck. There is no evil spirit troubling you. What is troubling you? is your inability to believe God and walk in faith. You are not mixing the words you have heard with faith because you don't believe in the love of God for you. He loves you so much. How can I sound it and make it real in your ears? He loves you so, so much much and it breaks his heart to see you suffer it breaks his heart to see you not knowing what to do it breaks his heart so what am i supposed to have been praying hey what have you been praying because sometimes you're praying but you're praying amiss hey but i've been praying that god should help me pay that debt or god should help me take care of this situation but it's not happening you see that now now james told us how people pray and miss they are thinking in their mind that they will consume the, see this thing that they are asking for they want to have bragging rights no let me tell you this the reason god does anything he does for you is simply because he loves you and you see if you don't come to terms with that truth then you are not ready to walk in line with anything that God has prepared for you. If you are thinking you want to get something so that you can have bragging rights tomorrow, no, you, your thoughts are wrong. God loves you. And it is His joy to see you do well. It is His joy to see you excited. It is His joy to see you happy. That is God's joy. And that's why he does everything. So you wake up in the morning, no money in your pocket. Hey, what thoughts will go through your mind? I know if I sit down here and wailing and crying, it's not going to give God joy. Why? Because God, God has provided everything that I require for life and godliness. He has provided everything. He is my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, I shall not want but there's no money in your pocket. I understand. But you know what? I'm going to do everything I need to do today because the money is going to come for it. The favor is going to come for it. Nothing will be missing that I'm supposed to do today. Now, when that, why, why are you talking like that? Because God loves me. And I know he has given me benefits for today. So you know what? You see those benefits? I'm going to receive all of it because the angels that walk with me and the angels sent from the Lord to be with me, they will see to it that every benefit that God has ordained for me comes to me. That's how you should talk. You don't sit down there and say, everybody hates me. Nobody likes me. Can't you remember the other day I went to ask somebody for money and then he didn't give me. Don't think those thoughts. Oh, they didn't give you money in the past. Not a problem. Not a problem. It is because God has provided enough for you. He doesn't want those people to take credit for it. You say, what do you mean? Yeah. Oh, it's not everybody's money you would receive. Didn't you read in scripture that the, 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 the king of Sodom wanted to hand over everything to him, but God told him, Abraham, don't take even a shoelace from that. Don't. But, 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 but yes. But, but, but why? He said, I don't want that man to ever think or say that he made you rich. <laughs> He's a king. Yes. He's got state resources. Yes, but God says, Abraham, I don't want that man. <laughs> oh, you've got to believe God. You've got to believe God. 
So you have this opportunity with this billionaire. And he tells you, look, guy, I want you to go into business with me. Okay. Give me tonight. Let me pray about it. And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, Lord, that's a great opportunity. And God says, no, you don't. Don't take it. Say, Lord, why? He said, I don't want that man to claim that he made you rich. <laughs> but Lord, the man is rich. I don't even have a car. He's a billionaire. I can't even boast of a hundred thousand naira. Guy, do you know what God is saying to you? He's saying to you that I'm going to so bless you beyond that man that you see. And I don't want that man to say his money was what helped you. You know, our time is up. <laughs> Praise God. I pray. These are not mere words. These are words you should allow to penetrate deep in your heart. Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.